just kind of same opening statement I had. Really hard fought game. Kent played really hard. Uh, Kent's, Kent's got a good football team, you know. They just they, they went to OU and almost beat OU and obviously took every last ounce of effort we had to hang on and beat them 20, you know, 23 16. Obviously, I thought I thought both teams played really hard. I thought, you know, I think the elements affected the game a little bit. Um, you know, there's a couple turnovers that probably the elements probably had something to do with. It's hard to say, um, but I thought it was a pretty clean football game. I thought both teams competed their tails off, like from watching it live and then watching on TV. It just it was it was a good football game. It was much like the Northern game, much like the Buffalo game, really much like the Western Michigan game. Just hard fought, kids competing, um, both teams making the other team earn it. You know. There was more ebb and flow in the game. Um, there was there was more momentum. I was very pleased with how we handled it. There was times that it felt like we had a chance to extend, and and we're in good position. We we get a really 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 good opportunity before the half when you're up nine to three and you think you're going to extend it to two scores. And the half ends and credit to Kent State gets a stop on a short field and then puts together a really nice drive and it's nine six and you're kind of going to halftime scratching your head like that's not. You got to stop, you use your timeouts, they punted it to the 47 yard line, you're on a short field and you're gonna, you're gonna get that, at least a field goal and get up two scores. But to Kent's credit, it's 9-6, that's just kind of the game went, like no one would really give in. Then we have that really nice drive to start the second half uh, and hit Mayock and finally there's, you don't have, you don't feel good, but there's at least, okay, we're up 16 to six. Like the next bad thing that happens, we're still gonna be leading. They can't score 10 points on one play, you know? So you have, then we get a really nice stop, we get a sack, we push them back. They punt the ball. We're going to, again, get the ball. It's kind of like I felt for We're up 10, and now we're going to get the ball midfield. And then we muff the punt, and Kent State's got the ball. And then they go on a drive, and we get a third down stop. And then a flag comes out as we're celebrating our third down stop. And, you know, we should have the quarterback on a fumble snap. And, he, you know, what Crum does, he's, so, he, he's hard to tackle. He just is. He's been hard to tackle for seven weeks. And, he throws the ball to the back of the end zone, then we get a PI on the play, so then they got first down, then we get a huge play by 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 Barati and Sterling coming off the edge, make a huge play. All right, and in in you kind of stop that momentum and you think, and then, then next thing you know, it's 16 to 6, and you go on a drive and you kick a field goal, go up 19 to 6, and again you think, okay, a little breathing room, but we're still only up 13, and then you know they get a roughing the center penalty or whatever they call it. And now you got first down the 10, and now you really feel like, okay. We can really seize control because we go up 23 to six late in the third. They got a lot of work to do to get back to you know to get three touchdowns on us, and then of course they make the play again. You know their team doesn't give in and they make the key play, and and they get the ball now. But okay, they're 90 yards from pay dirt. You're up, you know you're you're disappointed 16 to six, but you're up 10 and and then they you know their resiliency shows and they drive it 90 yards and score and put together a really nice drive and. Uh, Again, 23 to six and all of a sudden it's 16 to 13. And then that's the response that we needed. Like our offense again, just like last week against um, Northern Illinois at key times, our offense before the half and Northern that, that other drive in the third quarter that we talked about, just an unbelievable response from our offense. Cause they, you know, they're staring at 23 to six. Next thing you know, they're looking at 16, 13 and it's, and they're coming off a 90 yard drive and causing a fumble after we took points off the board. And all of a sudden they got all the momentum. And then we put together, we had a key, key one to Q on third down for a key first down and then we block it up and then Jalen uh, Bester makes a great run. And just, again, our response, it just seemed like each team just was gonna keep responding. That's kind of how it went the whole game until the kind of the clock ran out. They were, I'm sure they were still ready to respond again. And, you know, we get, you know, the ball back with 30 seconds left and probably just not a time for Kent to, you know, but so it, it, very, very proud of our team, proud of Kent's team, proud of how they play. Got a lot of respect for what Coach Lewis has done there. Um, and where he's done other places and how they play. There was no, you know, there was nothing on the field that was not, it was really hard fought football, but it was clean football and both teams were competing. So uh, very proud of the victory, very proud of the kids. And again, a team victory for us. Like we needed, we needed the special teams plays. You know, we had a couple special teams blunders, but we needed all the points. We needed the block field goal by Cossum. We needed the three field goals by Sloman. You know, we needed obviously offense. We ran the ball, uh, had chunk plays in the run game. Tyree has a huge game for us. Jalen has a huge game for us. We lose Danny Godlewski in pregame. So you lose one of your best football players in pregame. He goes out to warm up by himself and he does a pass set and he feels a twinge in his leg and 
he, I, you know, we're coming down and George tells me Danny's not playing. I'm like, Danny's not playing. What do you do? Quit? Like, what happened? Like, what's going on? Let me talk to him. I don't want him to quit. I want him to keep playing. You know, like what's, what's up, you know, what happened? And we didn't even go out for pregame and pads on. So I know he didn't get hurt with contact because we were trying to keep our clothes dry. So we weren't drenched before the game. We knew we were going to get drenched during the game, but we decided to go out there and try to stay as dry as possible. So he gets hurt in pregame. And then Jack Schroer, like we talked about after the game, like, Jack Shore, fifth-year seniors, really never played a meaningful moment here. It was buried on the depth chart forever. It was a D lineman buried. Then he was an O lineman buried. And the move from D line to O line, you usually know what that means, you know. And you know, and then all of a sudden, you're playing two and one Kent, and you and OU and Kent are all tied for the conference lead. And you're on the road, and it's in the rain. He's got to snap it. You know, you're not not your ideal conditions for your first game in five years to be the guy. And you find out with eight minutes before the game started that the guy's not playing like, or whatever, 20 minutes before the game's like, it's not, hey, guess what, today's your day. And he really played his tail off, he really did. He, he really did, and then we had Schaefer at one guard, true freshman, we have Rusty Feth at the other guard as a true freshman, and you got a fifth year senior who's basically a true, year, true freshman, because Caleb Schaefer's played a lot more than Jack Shore, even though Schaefer's been here since June, you know, I mean, he's way more reps, like, and, and those guys inside, and then obviously Tommy and Skibbs anchor this on the outside, then Homer plays but doesn't play your best tight end. And, and Q gets a big, big catch for us, and Mihalik's in their block, and we're using, we were using uh, offensive tackle as a tight end. We're in 98 because that's where you're at. Then Sorensen plays a little bit, but he doesn't really, you know, he's, he's not, you know, he was ready to play his legs. It looks like he hasn't run in two months, which he hasn't run in two months, you know. So he's not, you know, he's a – Poor man's version of Jack Sorensen. He'll keep getting his legs better and get back. But so you're you're without all these guys and then having 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 good response on offense and, and leaning on the run game and Dom makes some plays down the field and Mayak makes a big catch. So again, it was just one of those games. All hands on deck. You lose him. It's a big game on the road. It's hard to win on the road. It's raining and kids just keep stepping up and kids keep playing for each other. So just incredibly proud of this team. And again, you know, five out of eight on the road. We talked about after the game, you know, daunting non-league schedule, three out of four on the road against three top 25 teams, you know. And then you get the conference schedule and you got to go Buffalo, Western, Northern, right of the shoot, which we know those are, those are teams that are going to be hard to beat. And you get to that two and one, you know. And then it just, as it turns out, the conference is starting to short out a little bit and Kent State and OU and you are tied at two and one. And guess what? The next two weeks you got them on the road. Like, can you just set it up any harder for these kids? You know what I mean? And when, when I talk about it, I'm always proud of these kids, but just like what they're doing. And then you talk about just continual key injuries up front on offense and continual key injuries. Jack Sorensen, you know, maybe our best football, I don't know, Jack Sorensen, Doug Costin, Danny Godlewski, Tommy, Do like there, there's a slew of guys you could say are our best football player, but Jack's as good as anybody. He hasn't played all year. He hasn't played all year. And you got a true freshman quarterback. And you got third down, we got Lonnie Phelps and Ivan Pace rushing the passer as true freshmen. And you got Austin Ertle in there, you know, and you got James May was injured this week and couldn't play. And obviously he's been our big play guy the last three weeks. And no one even half our fans don't know who James May is, but that was a blow not having James May against Kent. Like he's the guy that's making our big plays down the field. He didn't, you know, so what they've done and with the schedule and then just how it's played out, it's like now it's going to be six out of nine on the road, you know. There's nobody in the team in the country has gone six out, you know. We're going week 10, we've got three home games. It stinks for the home crowd that want to come watch us play every so often. We don't, it's like, do they get to play at home this year? And like, you know, but just, again, our kids embracing that and our staff embracing that and our support staff are like, hey, it's, this, is, this is unbelievably fun, you know. Like, this is these, and then it's pouring rain and it's cold and it's windy and, okay, what's the excuse? You know, then our bus gets caught in the traffic you know and now we're 25 minutes late and now we're scrambling to get taped They're like okay what's next like this is awesome guys like what somebody's trying to challenge you and you're you're meeting all these challenges so uh, as proud as a group as I've been around probably in my whole, whole coaching career just how they are and how tough they are and how much they prepare and how much they care about each other and how they play through everything and grinding out a close tough victory was awesome so would you anticipate that the extra time for the uh, before you play Ohio would give you an opportunity to get those guys back and get Jack be Jack? Yeah, well, I think Jack's, like anybody that, that has a lower body injury, it just takes a little time to get your legs back. Like, he was cleared. I think he felt good. He just like, I can't run, coach. <laughs> like, I got you. I'm watching you. It looks like you can't run, you know? Like, to, like you know, he can run, but not how he wants. So, uh, obviously, the 10 days gives you an opportunity. We don't know. We don't know with Danny. We don't know with Homer yet. I think Jack's going to be running a lot better 10 days from now. I think he's going to be run a lot better you know, the next week against Akron and the next week against BG and the next week against Ball State, I think he'll continue, you know, that's normal course of coming off. You're 100% cleared, but you haven't done what you 
you're not ready in game shape. So, and I think that showed a little Saturday, but it was great to have him out there for the first time. And, and he made a you know, nice play early on a little drag route. Just, and again, just we're more confident when Sorensen's got clothes on and he's ready to go play football. That helps our whole team. How about May? Do you think he'll be back? Yeah, I think James should be fine in 10 days, we hope. So I hope they're all back, you know, but I think James definitely will be, will be good to go. What kind of a revelation was Shelton for you on Saturday? Tyree? Yeah. Um, Tyree's really talented. He's a redshirt freshman. Um, I tell Tyree, since he's got here, you have no idea how good you are. Like, you're, you're talented, dude. Like, there's, you make this game at times look easy, and this game is never easy. Um, he's a hardworking kid. He's done some nice things. Obviously, you've got Mo and Bester and Tyree and Davion. You've got – so no one – has totally got the lion's share of the duty. Obviously, Jalen kind of gets the most when he's healthy. Um, he's kind of the, the 1A and the other guys are kind of 1B. But Tyree got it going obviously early. We ran a play, should have been a five-yard gain. He runs over a, a Kent State player and, and turns into a 50-yard gain. And that's what great players do. Great players take five-yard gains and turn them into 50-yard gains. Good players take five-yard gains and make five-yard gains on them. And it was a well-blocked up play. but. Their secondary support came in and hit us at about five, six yards, and it should have been a, you know, a short, a nice short gain for us getting out of the hole. But great players end. Well, how'd you get the 50 yard? Oh, okay, great player made a great play, you know. And so it's his confidence keeps rising. He, he, you know, the other run we ran a play and we really blocked it nice and got got really good blocking inside. And then we got really good perimeter blocking and, and sealed it. And then he outran the corner. The corner got a little nosy inside, and he outran the corner and turned it into another big play. So I think he's run the ball well all year. Um, obviously, that was his best performance. And obviously, when you have four good ones, if one guy feels is feeling it, you're going to probably give him some more touches. That's just kind of the normal course of events, and kind of that was his day. Um, going up against Ohio, you guys are both tied for first place. You're three and one. Um, is, do you have to watch out to make sure that the extra time between the game doesn't get the players too much of an opportunity to get too worked up? Yeah, I mean, there's always, yeah, there's always that when you get into a big game, whether you got a week or 10 days. Um, it's really their time here. We're, we're going to give them some time off. I'm sure Ohio's giving their kids some time off. When they're time off, they don't even think about football. Like, you don't have to worry about that. Like, I wish they did, but they don't. Like, they're, they're, so the fact that we're going to give them time off, it's really going to be more of a seven-day window than a 10-day window. You know, and trust me, when our kids leave this building, they're, they're not thinking about anything Coach Martin tells them. Like, as much as I wish I had that type of impact, kids today are different. Like, if I tell them to go home and think about football, like, they ain't thinking about football. They're thinking about being a college kid and their classes and their homework and their girlfriend and their Xbox and their, you know, their video games and their whatever else, whatever else that they do. So, um, but again, whenever you play a big game, you got to, I'm sure both teams will be, play our game, like play the game. Both teams are having success. Both teams are having good conference season. Both teams have been really good MAC teams, um, you know, over the over the course of time. They've been doing it longer than us consistently. Um, I said, and the other thing is like when we got here, I looked around the league and there's a lot of good teams, and I'm trying like, well, who? I want to become like one of these good teams, you know? Like who 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 do we want to become like? Who's who's the picture of Miami five years from now? And I told our coaches, I told our players, like we got to become OU. What I saw from OU when I got here was, one, unbelievable consistency. Year in, year out, they were going to have a top MAC team. Then what I also saw from OU was kids played crazy hard. Kids were really disciplined. Kids were really well coached. They, they did their stuff very well. And they had really good talent. So they're, and I'm like, that's why they're consistent. I'm trying to sell our kids and our coach. Like, that's what it looks like. That's, in in. It suited my personnel, like that's what I want my team to look like, you know, and there's there's all sorts of different ways to win and build your program. But when I looked around, I'm like, okay, that's the program. They're on our side. <laughs> they're they're you know, they're right there every year, whether they win our side or not win our side, they're right in the hunt every year. They're always predicted. And there's a reason for it. They play really good football and they're really consistent. And they do things the right way. And their kids play the game the right way. They whipped our, you know, first year we had them down, they, they were way better than us. They came back and beat us. Second year we went to their place, it's 31 nothing at halftime. And I told Frank after the game, like, hey, that wasn't even a good scrimmage for you guys. It's embarrassing. You know, like, he, he wasn't even competitive. And I, I kept telling him, like, I told him year one, I told him year two, like, hey, 
we're gonna we're gonna become you. That's the goal. We're gonna become how you you know. And I got a lot of respect for Frank. I didn't know Frank before I got here, but I knew what he'd done at Nebraska all those years and all the successes. And I knew what kind of programs they ran at Nebraska, so I, it made sense exactly what was going on up the road. Just you know, it's how Nebraska used to do it. Smart and tough and clean and prepared and really talented kids doing it the right way. And you know, and to me, I'm I'm very proud of our organization that I think we have become them. I think we've become a very mirror image. I think we have similar kids. I think we have very talented kids, but I think we have kids that are awesome people. I think they're crazy competitive. I think they're crazy coachable. I think they don't blink when things go bad. If they have a bad game or a bad moment, you know you're going to keep coming at you. I think we've built like our kids have proven, like, hey, it doesn't matter. We're down 14 to 3. We're down 10 nothing. You, you fumble a punt. You fumble a ball in the 10. They drive 90 yards. Like, our kids aren't going to blink. Our kids are going to keep making you earn and keep playing. And, and so to me, somebody asked me about the rivalry, and the rivalry is really special. And obviously, you're both 3 and 1, and it's a huge conference game. Obviously, whoever wins this game is with three weeks to play, has a leg up on everybody, a game up on everybody in the league, and you have the tiebreaker on everybody in the league. Well, if you're a game up and you have the tiebreaker, you're two games up with three to play. Well, who doesn't want to be two games up with three to play? So you don't have to, like, everybody's got that figured out. Like, it's not like, well, you don't want to talk about, well, you talk about what? You don't think, you don't think my 17th long snapper knows that this is a big game? It's a big game. It's gonna, it's, it should determine the fate of the, the Mac East. There's still plenty of football left to be played, but who doesn't want to be up two games with three to play? You're in the driver's seat, you know? And then to me, just because I think, and they may think that they may hate us and they may, you know, but I think we're very, the rivalry is more special because I think it's going to be one knockdown drag out football game. I think that's how we play. I think we play, you know, we got up 28 7 last year and anybody that's paying attention shouldn't have been surprised that that game ended up tight, like that they weren't going to go away and they were going to play good football. And I think it's, you know, Turnovers happen, big plays happen, but it should be it should be a game where every inch is fought for for 60 minutes, and it's an anniversary 150th game, and it's on national TV, and it's you know Miami know you've done their part to make it even more important. So it, it should be a game that you love to coach, you love to play, you love to root for, you love to cheer for, you love to get prepared for, and if you don't, then you really don't like football very much. So is there anything different about Ohio on the field from? This year than in previous years? Um, not structurally. You know, every year, I mean, they lost some quality seniors. We lost some quality seniors. So there's some different faces. But offensively, they do what they do, and they're really, really good at what they do. You know, they, 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 they run everything off their zone play, their zone read play. Everything starts with that. All their play actions start with that. And then obviously, everything's centered around the best player in the league. You know, their quarterback is was maybe the best player in the league last year, if not as good as anybody in the league. And certainly, I mean, he's just crazy big play, you know, legs, arm, well, you name it, big play, big play, big play. Just like I said, he's very fun to watch unless you got to defend him, then it sucks. But for the rest of the year, I love watching a kid. I love, I love competitive kids that, that are playmakers that make big plays and compete and will their team to win, and that's what that kid does. Um, I don't like one, one game a year, I don't like that he's – he is the way he is because we got to try to slow him down a little bit, which is very difficult. Uh, but structurally versus and then defensively, same thing. They're going to run their quarters. They're going to play their one high. They're going to run their, their pressures that they really like and they're really good at and they do what they do. And they get really good at, at defending everything because they do what they do really good and they get better as the year goes on every year. They do it just like we get better as the year goes on every year. And then offensively, the same thing. They can inside zone. They can block anything you do up front because they run that same inside zone and they've seen every – Every pressure, every stunt, every front, they've seen it all and they run it over and over and get really good at it. So big physical up front, north and south tailbacks, perimeter guys make plays, crazy good quarterback. Um, that's why they're scoring all them points and all have all those yards. <laughs> they make it look easy at times. Okay, Mike, um, great performance by the defense, obviously on Saturday. Uh, did you see anything out of the films that you didn't realize right after the game? Uh, no, I mean, we knew they were going to go fast, and we knew they had some speedy receivers, fast fast running backs, and they like to play up tempo, try to get us on our heels. So we knew we had to get lined up fast to communicate. And I think we did a fairly good job of that. We gave up a couple touchdowns, but it's a little things that we can fix. But overall, I think defense, I think we did a pretty good job. What was what was the key to to uh, you being able to handle that 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 uh, that offense like that? Uh, just being able to get lined up fast with their fast tempo offense, uh, communicating with the defense, getting checks in, 
and just make it like we had really had pretty basic calls, but we knew if everybody was on the same page, then we'd be pretty uh, well able to stop them. So that was one of our big keys, just to make sure everybody got the call at the right time. So you guys have kind of a break now before you go up against Ohio. Uh, it's just something you're kind of looking forward to. What's your schedule going to be like over the next few days? Yeah, I think the uh, first couple of days are the same. Then we get a day or two off, and then Saturday starts like the regular week for us. But I think it's big having a couple guys banged up, get a couple of days to get your bodies feeling good, and extra film study so we can know what Ohio wants to do. So I think it'll be good for the team. You looking forward to playing Ohio again? Yeah. The the battle of the bricks. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a fun one. Huh? It'll be a fun one. Can you just talk a little bit about? Nathan Rourke, OU's quarterback. I don't know how much film you've watched on them at this point, but obviously really elusive, somewhat probably similar to what you just guys just faced this past week against Kent State. Yeah, I watched the game last night. They, they just played against Ball State, and still the same athletic quarterback. He makes their offense go, so that's one of our keys is stopping him in the run. He can make things happen in the pass as well, but that's one of our keys is we can stop him and we have a, a good chance to win this game.